these are the multiple choice questions 1 to 2018 past paper these are the multiple choice questions 1 to 10 the potential energy diagram below refers to the reversible reaction involving reactants R and products P. Okay, what is the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for the reverse reaction? So I'm going from P to R. Here is my enthalpy change because this time I am going down the way. This becomes a negative and it's P. That's not too bad for a first question. Okay, the relative rate of a reaction which reached completion in 1 minute 40 seconds is... Okay, so we're using your rate equation for 1 over t from the data book. Okay, it's 1 minute 40 seconds and we have seconds and seconds and minutes and minutes. So we've got per second or per minute here. So if it's per second, I'm going to do 1 over 100 because that's 1 minute 60 and you're 40. If I'm doing it as minutes it would be one and two thirds, which I'd probably actually keep in my calculator as one and two thirds. Or I might have, just because I'm doing this kind of rounding wise, maybe put in one and several sixes, okay? Because I'm just needing it to be close for me to be able to figure out what this is, because you can see this is quite a big difference, okay? Um, right, so if I do one over 100, I get 0 0.01. There's my answer. Just to see, I did work this one and it comes out somewhere around about the 0 0.6. So these are definitely wrong and that was wrong anyway. Okay. Question three, we've got an energy distribution diagram. Okay, which of the following is the correct interpretation of the above energy distribution diagram for a reaction as the temperature decreases from T2 to T1? Okay, so T2 is this curve here. Oh, that's a very dodgy following of curve, but we can see it. Okay, and T1, give me a different highlighter just because color is good. Okay, and still dodgy color following, but never mind. Okay, right, so we've got our T1 and our T2. We are going from T2 to T1, so going down the way. Activation energy, we don't do anything to activation energy. Here it is, it's sitting here, it just remains the same. The number of successful collisions, okay, so in T2, all of these molecules were above the activation energy, so it means if they collided, there was a chance that they would actually have a select su su successful collision, assuming correct orientation. Um, but when we went to T1, then it's only these ones in here. So number of successful collisions must decrease. So D. First three ionisation energies of aluminium in the table. Okay, so you're not even asking you to go look for them. Using this information, what is the enthalpy change in kilojoules per mole for the following reaction? And we've got Al plus goes to Al3 plus plus 2e minus. Now, if you had a panic and you weren't sure, you would obviously go straight to your data book, look at the ionisation page, and it gives you the definition, which is that for any element, okay, the first ionisation energy is this. And then it even tells you the second ionisation energy is this and then it says and so on okay so what i'm looking for is to get from this to this okay my al plus to my al3 plus so i've already done this first one okay so i'm not looking at the first ionization energy so just get rid of that don't don't put it in your calculator okay but what you're going to have to do is just add these two together to go from al2 plus to sorry Al plus to Al2 plus and then Al2 plus to Al3 plus. Okay, so add them both together and we should get C. Okay, an element contains covalent bonding and London dispersion forces. The element could be, you'll notice I've pulled over a periodic table, it's just so we can be clear on some of these things. Okay, um, right, so it says contains covalent bonding. Okay, so covalent bonding can only be me looking at non-metal side, okay, um, but also being very clear for covalent bonding, um, I am going to take out, I can do this, uh, I'm going to take out these guys, okay, these guys have to be out of it because they don't have any covalent bonding because they are your monatomics, okay, so I'm going to get rid of neon, okay, I'm also going to get rid of sodium because it was on the wrong side of the line, which leaves me with boron and sulphur. Now, boron and sulphur are in here and in here. They're both good for covalent. However, um, what you should now know is that sulphur is discrete molecular 
with S8. So it will have covalent bonding, kind of bonding the sulfurs all together in a nice little ring. And then you will have London dispersion forces between these rings and other rings of sulfur. OK, so it is sulfur. But to be very clear why it's not boron, boron is in this little triangle thing. God, I'm making this very scribbly. Let me just uh, go with a little highlighty thing. So it's still scribbly, but hopefully makes more sense. OK, carbon boron and silicon are your little triangle of covalent bonds in a network. So in terms of that element, it's not going to have London dispersion forces between other parts of the element because they're all connected with covalent bonds. OK, so hence why it's sulphur. OK, question six. Um, erythrose is, an, is a chemical that's known to kill cancer cells. Um, so we're all for it. OK, um, the two functional groups present in erythrose are OK, so this is just a do you know your functional groups? Um, so you have an OH group here, which is hydroxyl. In fact, you have several. You have one here, one here and one here. OK, you also have a C double bond O, bond H, but it's the C double bond O that matters. And that is a carbonyl. What you don't have is a C double bond O, bond OH. So you don't have the combination of a carbonyl and a hydroxyl which is your carboxyl, OK? It's so one time, you know, it did make sense. There's the carbo and there's the oxyl, so carboxyl. Um, so this one is not here, so we don't want to look at this at all. So ignore that, OK? But we do have uh, your OHs and we do have a carbonyl. So carbonyl and hydroxyl. There we go, C. Oh, we don't have an ester because that's that, just be ages okay right a uh, name of the above compound so just follow your follow your rules okay I need the longest possible chain that contains the functional group the functional group I've got here is a um, carboxyl group so I'm gonna go there 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 and then I'm gonna go around the corner because I'm gonna try and get my biggest possible chain I can get one two three four so I've got butte um, anoic acid Right, now I'm going to number from here, so that's one, two, three, four. And now I'm going to go looking for extra groups. I have one, two, three extra groups. They are all methyls, so I have got two, two, three, trimethyl, butanoic acid. There we go. Okay, question eight, we're looking for an isomer, an isomer of pentan 3 all. OK, um, so they've given them a structural formula down here, um, shortened structural formula, sorry, and you've got the name. So let's do a full structural formula to make it easier for us to work out what we're doing. OK, here's, here's your pent, here's your OH. Um, just fill in hydrogens around here so I can do a count. OK, so I've got C5, H, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and O. OK, so this is my... This is my um, formula that I'm trying to work for, my molecular formula. OK, so let's see if any of them help me out with this. I need five carbons. One, two, three, four, five in the top. One, two, three, four, five in the next one. Two, three, four, five in the next. One, two, three, four, five in the next. Not particularly helpful. Sometimes they are. OK, but I can't get rid of anything that way. Right, so let's look at A. A is CH3, CH2, CH with an OH, <laughs> CH2, CH3. So that is the same thing, so it's not that, it's not an isomer. OK, uh, B goes CH3, CH, CH, that's a double bond. OK, so straight away you could be looking at that and going, well, that's wrong. OK, you could also have gone, there are three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens in there. So I know I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm not, that's not going to work either. Um, and the same thing's going to happen with C, because I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens here, because again, you look here, I've got another double bond, so get rid of that. Last one, let's have a check. Uh, we've got CH3, CH with a CH3 attached to that one. A CH2, CH2, OH. That's good, because basically that's just this here. I have shifted the OH over here, and then I've taken the carbon and moved that there. OK. Oxidation of 4-methyl pentan 2 to the corresponding ketone results in the alcohol 
doing what, okay? Right, now you could draw out the full thing. Let's just do that. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, pent to all. Let's put an OH on there and four methyl. Here's methyl. Okay, so here's the actual compound and you're going to change it to the ketone. Okay, so changing it to the ketone would keep your CH3 here. C double bond O here. And let's still put our methyl down here. Okay, there's your compound. That's what's happened. So let's look to see what's actually happened in terms of losing or gaining. It hasn't gained anything. So, you know, not gained any extra um, oxygens, which is why they put the 16 in. Uh, what I've done is I've lost a hydrogen here and I've lost that hydrogen here. So because I've lost two hydrogens, I am going to lose two grams for every one, every mole that I, that I shift. If you didn't want to draw out the whole thing, you could just say, right, okay, it's a secondary alcohol, change into a ketone, what have I done? And you would do exactly the same thing. I've lost a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here, two grams, whichever you prefer. Okay, last question of this set. Essential amino acids are defined as the amino acids which, well, it's a definition, so uh, essential amino acids are ones that you must acquire through your diet. You can't get them any other way. Um, and yeah, the rest of them just are not true for essentials. They are, some of them are absolutely true when we're talking about just amino acids. Obviously, A and D um, are just definitions of amino acids. Right, uh, that's that one.